Hi, Anna. Um, my name is Michael. I'm 51. I'm a welding inspector. I live here in Perth, Western Australia. Um, as you can probably tell from my accent, I'm actually from um, north of Manchester originally, um, a place called Bury. Um, I grew up in that area and, um, and my family still live there. So I wanted to uh, basically contribute to the other people's voices who have uh, done a sterling job in expressing how they're feeling um, with the current crisis we find ourselves in. Um, I just wanted to give a little bit of background. I've lived in Western Australia since 2007. I came back to the UK last year twice to visit family there and have a holiday. First time I've been back since uh, leaving the UK. And, um, and it made me realise just how much I miss being there. So I was planning on moving back to the UK and plans were in motion to move back um, earlier this year. So um, I'd been in um, negotiations with removal companies and uh, I have a cat and a dog and I had to uh, speak to companies regarding getting those moved back. So everything was, uh, was starting to fall into place. And then this crisis occurred. Um, so in a panic, I, I booked flights and tried to get my pets booked onto flights. And, um, and, and it just wasn't possible. Um, the, the dog that I have is a boxer and there's very few airlines that will take boxers. Most of the airlines that will take boxers um, are grounded, they're not flying and uh, so I wasn't prepared uh, ultimately to uh, make the move uh, without my pets. So I'm kind of in limbo at the moment here in Western Australia. Um, I've got a job here so, um, so I'm planning on staying here until things start to uh, improve in terms of travelling. What I would like to discuss is <clears throat> What I see as an uh, as someone standing on the outside of the UK, as it were, and uh, looking in, and I've been absolutely appalled at what seems clearly blatant and obvious lies um, from the politicians in the UK. And look, that's um, <laughs> I think that's universal. I think that's around the world. Here in uh, Australia is no different. We have, here in WA, we, we have no lockdown in place at the moment. The only restrictions on us are we still have to observe social distancing or anti-social distancing, as I call it. And, um, and obviously the travel restrictions. You're not allowed to leave Australia. There's a complete travel ban if you're a, an Australian resident and you have to apply for a dispensation. And uh, a lot of people are having their applications denied even if you're a dual citizen it's very difficult to uh, to leave australia traveling on your british passport so um, so that's the uh, situation in wa at the moment but as uh, <laughs> a lot of people will have seen from the media um, melbourne is a completely different kettle of fish they have gone into very draconian lockdowns where uh, they have a curfew in place. You can't go out in the evening. Uh, they've shut pretty much all businesses again, um, which means probably massive numbers of people losing their jobs. So going back to the UK, the UK isn't unique in the way the politicians are dealing with this. And I think a few people have touched on this. This is in my view, being driven by the wealthy elites, uh, that's the, the banking class, the wealthy, powerful families um, who have for hundreds of years built their dynasties, their family dynasties um, and wealth and power. And they have ultimately planned this all along. Their plan is to basically control the world and they sit atop the pyramid with the politicians a couple of layers beneath who are essentially just puppets of the powerful elites. And people need to wake up to this reality. 
Uh, it's not a conspiracy theory. It's a fact. It's a fact that these people control the world that we live in. They control the finance sector. They control the the all of the wars that happen. They're the ones that are driving this agenda. Um, the politician, politicians are just doing what they're told. They're selected, not elected. This uh, this idea that we are um, living in some sort of democracy where we get a choice um, is, is a false choice because you're given two options, uh, option A and option B, both as bad as each other, both self-serving, whether it's the left or the right, which is a false paradigm. Um, and this is where we find ourselves. And the only way that we have now to uh, to to end this is to is to take control there are more of us than there are of them and we need to let them know that we're not going to take it anymore i mean if you look back through history this has happened number of times in history and it always ends badly for these people they usually end up at the end of ropes or in the example of the french revolution they get the heads chopped off the people will not put up with this forever so, so one of the other things that has uh, deeply affected me through this is my family. My mother, she's, she's getting on in years and uh, she does live in a um, supported housing facility, which is kind of an aged care facility. She has her own flat, um, but it's supported. So there's a, an on-site person who checks in and makes sure that she's okay. My mum's got a few health issues, um, which makes her really vulnerable to uh, to to um, to any kind of um, any kind of virus or illness that's going around. So uh, so that has caused me a great deal of anxiety, not being able to be there during this crisis for her. Um, my sister, she uh, she's she's a, a single mum raising a daughter on her own. And um, she's currently find, finds herself um, working from home, and um, and as a result, it's it's starting to have an effect on her life. This uh, this situation, she's uh, she's I think she's like a lot of people uh, who find themselves in this situation, coming to the end of a tether and losing the plot a little bit over the fact that she can, doesn't seem to be able to go out very much and. Um, she feels trapped and imprisoned in a horn home. I feel really, uh, I feel really sad that I can't be there for my family, and uh, that has affected me deeply. Um, I do speak to my family more now. I, um, I could go for weeks and weeks <laughs> without talking to my family before this crisis, but now I speak to them every week. I uh, make a. Uh, very conscious efforts to stay in touch and, and find out how they're doing and and keep uh, keep myself uh, aware of what's going on in their lives. Um, one of the reasons I was desperate to get back and I still want to get back is to be there for my family. Um, my father died um, just uh, just before Christmas, a very sudden and short illness, and. Uh, Thankfully, I was uh, able to see him before he uh, passed away. Um, but uh, that, I guess, has, has made it even more um, important to me now to, uh, to try and, and be there for my family. I think there's a lot of people around the world who find themselves in this situation. And, and I think someone on one of the other videos touched on it is this fear I think it was a guy who lives in South Australia, who, uh, who this fear that you might never see immediate fam family members, immediate family members again in your own lifetime. I mean, I'm 51 and I like to think that this crisis, this full crisis is going to go away soon and things will go back to some kind of normality in terms of travel. But if you listen to what the media keeps saying, and the media have been basically the mouthpieces of uh, the establishment and basically priming the people for more and more restrictions on our lives, like restrictions on our movements and travel and 
um, you know, all of these, when you listen to this, all of these aspects make you realize that, hey, um, I might be stuck here in Australia for the rest of my life, you know, um, a kind of prison without walls. Ironic, really, when you consider, you know, the hundreds and hundreds of people that the British sent here, um, convicts, <laughs> and now they're turning it into a great big pr pr prison. Anyway, um, I, I thought that was quite ironic. Um, so, yeah, those are some of my thoughts. It's, uh, I don't know, I don't know if, uh, if, if there are, are enough people right now awake to really make the difference but I truly hope that more and more people are waking up and getting angrier and angrier by the day at what they can see because again people have touched on this um, we're not stupid people uh, as much as uh, a lot of these elites look down their noses at us like we're you know the cannon fodder with a tax cattle, um, a lot of us are very intelligent uh, people, and and the other thing that we possess in great abundance is intuition, and we know when something's not right. We know when some when we're being lied to, when something doesn't smell right, you know. And right now, uh, I think a lot of people's spider senses are tingling um, at what's going on, but they don't quite fully understand. Uh, why they feel um, a degree of trepidation or suspicion about the situation and and that's probably because a lot of people haven't done much in the way of research about how the world really works because we have been mostly indoctrinated by our education system to believe in this idea of we're living in a, a free democracy um, but we are far from living in a free democracy. I think what we're seeing now is the end of democracy and we're moving towards this top-down authoritarian technocracy where unelected bureaucrats are in charge and the politicians just basically take their orders from these unelected officials in government the nameless people who we don't know, the Boris Johnsons and the Scott Morrisons and the even um, even Donald Trumps of the world, they're getting their orders from other people. Not um, they're not making the the orders. They're uh, basically delivering the orders, and we have to uh, we have to recognise that fact. So let's stay positive. And that's a message that we all need to uh, to grasp. Stay positive. Try to connect with each other. Try to build a little bit of resilience because this fear that we have been driven to, and I've been I've been caught out by this myself, um, stress and anxiety over this situation, and um, maybe try to be a little bit more stoic, and um, and, and and be stronger in the knowledge that we can defeat these people. We just need to come together, put our political ideological differences aside, because that's all divide and conquer thing that has been put out there to, uh, to, to, to cause division in our society. And, um, and we can beat these people. So uh, keep up the good work, Anna. Um, and uh, I hope this, uh, this video inspires other people to also contribute to the conversation. Thank you.